There's no question protecting our coastline is going to take constant care. We need to reshape our coastline with big dunes like this before Mother Nature does. Critical in all this, the forecasting part of it. Technology is improving all the time and helping us pinpoint severe weather and bring you accurate alerts. We gather that information, we process it, we bring it to you. And it's pretty exciting how forecast skill is just skyrocketing. Meteorologist Jeff Smith has the latest on the forecast technology. Technology has revolutionized our ability to forecast the weather. Computers can simulate the atmosphere like never before, and we can provide viewers with AccuWeather alerts at breakneck speed. But before any of this can happen, we need to gather good data, and the National Weather Service is at the forefront. We talked with Joe McKetta, Warning Coordination Meteorologist at the Mount Holly office. 100 years, I mean, we had to use telegraph and telephone to get the data from one station to the other. Uh, now, a lot of it's, you know, satellite-based, uh, um, so we get information basically instantaneously. That includes not only observations from a dense network of weather instruments, but also remote sensing that allows us to peer into storms with startling detail. We attribute it almost like going uh, to the doctor and getting an MRI or a CAT scan. You know, these technologies were not available 20 or 30 years ago. And with a new radar technology called dual polarity, not only can we determine where it's precipitating, but what type of precipitation is occurring up in those clouds. Now we're able to measure in, in, in two or three dimensions, which we haven't been able to do before, enabling us to figure out what the structure of the precipitation particles are. And that structure could indicate rain, snow, or sleet, helping immensely in winter storm forecasting. These ground-based radar beams bounce off of particles and send us a treasure trove of data. Meanwhile, up in space, the weather satellite GO-16 is continuously taking imagery of the clouds from above. We're actually able to see storms grow minute by minute in some cases from the cloud down. It's very uh, helpful to us in terms of our warning uh, forecast procedures. This is in contrast to the older generation of satellites, which would only provide images every 15 to 30 minutes. All of this data ends up being fed into computer models, which create a mathematical simulation of the atmosphere. Two of the most commonly used are the American and the European models. The superior skill of the European model during Superstorm Sandy helped to motivate improvements to the American model. There was a lot of upgrades technology and physics wise to the American model and so um, I think it's getting better. The European model and the other models are not sitting on their heels either. Um, they see competition and okay let's make ours better too. And that competition is proving to be good for everyone involved. The day three and four forecasts that we make now are just as good as day one and two were 20 years ago. Reporting from the National Weather Service, I'm meteorologist Jeff Smith.